everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to my podcast. My name is Shannon Bellum and this is Bellum Make Knits. This is a podcast about knitting and I have some a little bit of sewing to share with you today too. Um, so yeah, I'm coming to you from northern New Jersey. We finally, the last um, her, her, dredges of a hurricane that was pushing its way from the one that hit Florida. Sorry, I hope everyone's okay in Florida. Um, that one, it, it pushed its way, pushed up warm clouds and that all left. And now it's really cool. We have cool weather finally, which is, you know, just in time for Rhinebeck because <laughs> next weekend is Rhinebeck as uh, I'm sure many of you know. So that's cool. It's helping me figure out better what I'm gonna wear um, to the events at Rhinebeck. So, um, so I'm gonna go to Needles Up and Indie Untangled on Friday. And then on Saturday, I will be at Rhinebeck. And then I think I'm going to, oh, and then I, I just got invited to the um, Jill Draper Make Stuff event that is Saturday evening. So I will be going to that too. And then I think I'm gonna wrap it up. I don't. I don't think I'm gonna go back for a second day, though if you've never been, Sunday is much lower key. It's not nearly as nutty. Um, so if you really wanna just look around and look at the animals and watch some of the animal events and, and also shop, all of the shopkeepers will restock. Um, most of them have enough stock to get them through the weekend. They're all seasoned. <laughs> um vendors so that's a way to um you know to experience it not quite as crazy and packed because it can get really really jam-packed um in the in the barns and stuff in the wool barns i'm going to try to be strategic this time though and um target the places that i want to go to and uh yeah and then you know spend some time wandering around and during the when other people are eating and stuff like that that's that's my plan um yeah and that is next weekend i have a finished knit object which martha is uh is wearing this is the shawl design that i um and i'll take it off of her in a sec so you can see it closer well let me just tell you about it it's the shawl design that i have made for i was commissioned to make by long island yarn and farm um, I completed the pattern so i i, I didn't podcast last week and um i I've been kind of quiet on Instagram because I've been ver doing very non-glamorous pattern writing. It is, um, it's my least favorite part of designing and um, checking the math and making sure everything. With a shawl though, it's a, it's a thousand times easier than it is to write a sweater pattern because you know, if it's a little, it, you don't have to be so careful about fit for a shawl. Um, and you know, once you have your shape established, it, it, it is what it is. And it can even be asymmetrical if you want. This one is symmetrical. It is a symmetrical triangle. Um, it is a two skein project, two skeins of fingering weight yarns from um, Long Island Yarn and Farm. It is so scrumptious and soft and just so beautiful. Um, let me tell you about the yarns. It took, um, this is what I have left. <laughs> this is what I have left of the the beige um, skein and uh, this is the citrine color what I did for the pattern was I reduced a little bit of the yield of this color because I was a little concerned that knitters may run short and I didn't want them to have to buy a second skein of this just to finish so um, they should end up with more than this amount um, at the end. Um, the modification I made is so slight. I, I mean, it's it'll it'll yield more, but um, it won't be really noticeable in the design. And this is what I have left of the purple color. The the beige yarn that's right here is an alpaca silk blend, 80% alpaca and 20% silk. It is the color citrine. And Tabitha will be at Rhinebeck with her animals. I think her animals are competing and um, she will also have a booth. So if you are going to Rhinebeck, you can 
you can check out, you can actually see my shawl in person because I'm overnighting it to her tomorrow. So she'll have it by Tuesday. She can get it packed and ready um, for, the, for the show on Saturday. And I've already sent her the pattern. So she's got that to review and see if there's any changes that she wants me to make. Um, and yeah, so this one, the purple one, this purple yarn is a alpaca superwash wool bamboo blend. Um, though I would say, um, Tabitha has about six or seven fingering weight yarns that I think any combo of the two would be beautiful. In fact, I, I think I'm going to pick up a skein of this when I see her on Saturday. Um, and... A skein of something else. Um, I she has a beautiful, uh, I think it's called onyx color. That's kind of um, a variegated gray, charcoaly gray color. I think I'm I'm gonna check that out. But if it doesn't wow me, I think I'm gonna um, buy a skein of the pink clove color, which is a, a very very pale blushy pink color that she makes in all her weights, and it's her. It's a very popular. <laughs> very popular color for her. Um, so I'm, I'm definitely gonna get two skeins so I can make myself a shawl because um, this isn't mine. This is going to the, this is going to the shop and um, Tabitha will use it in her shows. So I'm really excited about the exposure that I'm gonna get from um, having a design in Rhinebeck. So that's super cool. Super excited about it. And yeah, um, yeah, I think that's all I can I can share about the yarn. Let me show you the design since it's completed now. You've been watching. If you've watched my previous episodes, you've you've seen it as it as it goes. Um, this is a center out design. Hang on, uh, I need to move this hand. This hand. This hand. This hand where you start in the center, that center, it looks like a square or a rectangle now, but it starts out as a circle. It's a center circle um, where you do a bunch of increases and then you knit that square around it and then the square becomes a rectangle and then the rectangle becomes a triangle. So let me see if I can show you, there you go. So there's the bottom of it and you can kind of get an idea of the way the, the wings of that shawl go. I did um, an asymmetrical layout for the striping. So on this side, the stripes get gradually bigger. And on this stripe uh, side, the stripes get gradually smaller. I did that just because I like asymmetry. <laughs> and also, um, I thought as a knitter, that's gonna be more interesting than you know. It's like it's like second sleeve, right? So this will avoid the whole um, second sleeve <laughs> syndrome. Um, but you know, if you want, you could easily do the same striping. So if you wanted to do bold, broad striping on both sides, you could. Um, if you wanted to do micro striping on both sides, you could do that too. Just depending on what you like. Um, but this way, you have options. Um, I can tell you that the micro stripe side is a little bit tighter. I don't know why. Um, I'm a pretty consistent knitter, so I'm guessing it has something to do with the color layout. And um, this this side, I think I think this um, alpaca silk is just really really springy. So I think that's what it is. Finished off the top with an I cord trim. And then the rest of the edging is a little one by one rib. Um, that I gave a very stretchy bind off to. Um, I used very pink, very stretchy bind off method, um, which you can find easily on the internet. You can also do a sewn bind off if you wanted to do a very stretchy bind off. I, I wanted to have the flexibility in the in the um, in the binding off to to really make it uh, stretch to because I knew that alpaca silk would stretch. Um, well, so I wanted to make sure that I had that, um, the capacity, uh, or the yarn had the capacity to do that. So yeah, that is, uh, there you go. Martha's wearing one of my finished sewn objects, which I'll talk about as I'm, I'm wearing another one. I'll talk about that when I get to sewing. 
There we go. I just love the way it feels and oh my goodness, it's just so nice. It's so nice. This is gonna be such a nice, warm, cozy shawl um, this winter. And I think it would be really nice to just throw on. Often I get up early before the heat comes on in the, in the morning. So it'll be really nice to to just throw on around my shoulders with um, over my pajamas. Well, you know, while I kind of puts around before I get dressed. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's my finished object. The um, other three things I've been working on, my works in progress, one of them is a uh, yet another um, design for Long Island Yarn and Farm. Oh, I'm mid-row. That's okay though. Um, I think I can, I can still talk about this. Uh, so this is a cardigan design. It's a top-down knit. And there's the trim. Um, raglan sleeve. And I am, I've already split for the sleeves and I've got about two inches. I have another two to three inches to go before I will be um, starting the color work. So this will have color work in it, this, this lovely design. Um, this is the yarn. It's uh, again, like sort of a creamy ivory color, but this one has gold sparkles, which I love. I think it's so pretty. And I think this is gonna be really, really warm. This is this is Long Island Yarn and Farm's sport weight, but for me, it gauged up and swatched up like a DK weight, um, like a commercial DK weight. Uh, 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 let me tell you about that yarn. Oh, I don't know. Oh, wait, hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Where are the tags? Here they are. Um, and I also forgot to bring over the, the co contrast color. This is the... Okay, this is 70% alpaca, 25% wool, and 5% nylon, which is probably that sparkle in it. Um, but that, that will also give it a little bit of stability. Um, the, the purple yarn that I'm using for contrast is 50% alpaca, 20% silk, and 30% wool. So it's really pretty. Another sport weight yarn. That's the, um, that's the swatch that I use to just make sure I was gonna get the color work um, gauge correct. So um, that's not the pattern that I'm gonna do. I actually haven't figured out the pattern that I'm gonna do, but um, more or less, that's my rough sketch of the design work. Um, so it will be on a, a shorter, like high hip length sweater. The um, neckband is being knit in as you go so there's no coming back to finish the neckband um, you could make buttonholes or you could you could you could knit in buttonholes or you can make buttonholes afterwards I like the make buttonholes afterwards method <laughs> so that's what I plan to do um, so so yeah that has been that that's gotten a little of my attention I have realized over the past couple weeks that when I have an issue um, my cat's over there playing. Sorry if that's distracting the noises that he's making. Um, I realize that when I have an issue with a with a, a knit project, whether it's like I just don't, you know, I know that I'm getting close to having to make a decision about something, whether it's the color or the pattern or whatever, I am not inspired to knit on it. I ha I have I the all three of the things that I'm working on had I had issues with. <laughs> this the last two weeks so I did make myself do some more knitting and actually for this one the Long Island yarn and farm one the only thing I have to do is just work out the pattern and it won't it's and that stuff is fun and I don't know why I'm I don't know why I haven't done it yet I other than I've just been really really crazy and whoops <laughs> it's here the shawl writing the shawl pattern really hung over my head and I just felt like I needed to get that done because I really wanted Tabitha to have this shawl in time for Rhinebeck. Um, so yeah, that really hung over. And now that it's done, I feel a little like there's more headspace and I can, I can now like sit down and graph the color work for this sweater. As I, I can tell you, I do want it to be 
this is a little too thin like I want there to be more density of color more color density so yeah I gotta think about that I, I think I plotted out a little bit played around with it when I first was when I first had the idea but I hadn't um, yeah, I just haven't, I haven't finished, so I got to do that, and I, I actually am taking a train ride into New York City, which means I'm going to have about two hours of knit time, and I'm worried <laughs> that if I take this project with me, I will hit the place where I need to start doing the color work, so I could either take it and bring some graph paper so I could sit there and pencil around while I'm sitting on the train, or I could, um, I don't know take something else I, I don't know I'm gonna figure it out after I'm done with this podcast <laughs> okay the other thing that I've been working on is my rocaine sweater that I've been doing for um, the Amy Florence of Stranded Dye Works podcast and I have been doing pretty well on it um, I've made lots of progress I have completed the front and the back um, and I have started on a sleeve. So that's what's going on right here. I have um, a partial sleeve done. I'm finding this knit really frustrating. I, <laughs> uh, moment of truth, right? I really hate this section right here. And at least this is done. But the chart, so the, here's my issue with this pattern. The chart gives you something to do um, every row. So there aren't any rest rows, which I, I really don't appreciate. Um, and then I think that this section right here, I'm gonna show you up close. This section of the chart, there was no rhythm. Like sh those are supposed to be circles. Can you see circles? Cause I can't. I'm all I you know all I see is texture so I'm talking about this right here where my middle finger is that the over here are yes you see texture and this was super easy to do it was four rows of knit and two rows of pearl super simple this however every row you were moving where you were doing the pearl stitches and it wasn't it was like really random so sometimes you're doing five sometimes you're doing two sometimes three I really, really hated it. And by the time I got around to the back, I was just like, why? Why, why, why? Don't design something. Hi designers, hi, I'm talking to you. Don't design something that a knitter can't memorize and then there's absolutely no need for it. <laughs> this would have been fine as a seed stitch or a little bar like where you did four, four, two, four, two of knit pearl, knit pearl, something like that. That would have been fine. And sorry, my phone's going off. Um, we did not need to try to make these silly little circles. And mind you, I've also knitted it in a pretty solid color. So uh, yeah, I don't see the circles. All I see is my frustration when I look at that <laughs> part right there. Um, and I'm, I'm, you know, it's a good lesson for me though, like to, to, um, oops, just dropped a stitch. I, it was a good lesson for me too, to just real recognize that about my own, though I am, I am disinclined to make myself work too hard. So I probably won't make you work hard either. Um, cat, <laughs> cat is <laughs> wiggling the table. Sorry guys. Sorry for the rocking right there. Um. So yeah, my other concern about this is that it's really short. I I don't know. I I mean, I'm hoping it'll stretch a bit, like maybe the texture will stretch out a bit. And Amy also complained about the width of the neck, and I think she's right. It feels too wide. Um, I also think the pattern is written for the sleeve length to be too long, because I know for me, a set in sleeve, if I'm doing a set in sleeve that's coming right up here to my shoulder, I need that to be 18 inches long. And she's telling us to knit this 17 and a half and then make rib. And this is a drop shoulder. So that kind of doesn't make sense. But I'll, I'll figure that out when I go. But um, there is a little bit of patterning on the sleeve, which I just have been hating. <laughs> just hating. Um, so I may, after I finish this, I may just 
I think I'm just gonna do a plain sleeve because I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm over this. I'm over this. It's, it's too bad because it's really beautiful yarn. It's gorgeous, gorgeous yarn, and I think it's gonna be. I, you know, I'm hoping. Like, I know Amy loves hers, so I'm hoping I really love it when she, when I'm done, as um she really loves hers. So we'll we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Um, so the yarn is by the Periwinkle Sheep. She is an indie dyer in outside of Albany, New York, which is um, not very far from Rhinebeck. And the color is called the Warm You, which is a local yarn store in Chatham, New York. And it is, whoops, it's a DK weight. It's her Merino DK, 100% superwash Merino wool, sourced in South America and hand dyed in Albany. 225 yards, 100 grams. And I actually, I'm on my... I'm on my fourth skein, so this is my fourth skein. I don't think I'm gonna need my fifth skein. I have five skeins of this, so which I think is pretty standard for a DK weight sweater. So I'm a little, um, yeah, I'm a little, not a little concerned uh, at all. I'm not concerned at all, actually. Uh, I think I'm gonna be fine with just this, with the second skein, with the fourth skein um, for the sleeves, because like I said, I don't think those sleeves are going to need to be very long. Uh, so yeah, okay, one more, <laughs> one more problematic work in progress. And you know, the, the sad thing is that normally, like if I, if I didn't have obligatory knitting to do, like if I wasn't obligated to, to finish the shawl and I wasn't obligated to make that cardigan, I probably would have put some of these other things aside and just like cast on something new, just to give myself something different to make. Um, so my third whip that I've been making lots of progress on is the El Elton Cardigan by Hohi Locatelli. It is, uh, you can't really see it too well in this picture here, but you'll see it in my knit. It is a, a striped cardigan where you stripe uh, a wool and a silk mohair. So I'm loving this now, but wow, it took me a while. I just thought the construction of this was really weird. So um, it just took me a while to get past that. Um, this is another drop shoulder. Okay, let me show you how this is. So it's a top-down knit. I have the, the back and part of the front done, um, one, one half of the front done. So let me show you that the yarn up close. There you go. So there you go. You can, you're getting a good idea of the, my kitty's going wild. Wild cat, wild. Um, ah, shoot, I just dropped some stitches in my, as I endeavored to show you. Um, okay, there we go. I, I'm using um, a needle to hold my stitches. She suggested putting it on a holder, but I, I don't know, I'm lazy, lazy. Yeah, so yeah, so there you go. You're getting a good idea of what it's gonna look like. I, I actually really like it now, like now I get it. Um, what she has you do is start on the back. So you start up here at the top, cast on, and then you're doing a bunch of short rows to get this back neck shape. And then, um, and then from there you're, um, maybe you cast on the shoulders, maybe you knit each shoulder, then you join them. Uh, and then you knit this for a little while. And then you, when you reach a certain point, you break the yarn and then you cast on to the edge so like when I do this next shoulder this uh, other side rather I'll be casting on on the shoulder seam right here um, so you can see how 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 wide that is so that's a really dropped really dropped shoulder it's as long as the sleeve of the of the dress that I'm wearing um, so yeah I couldn't get my head around the way like it didn't seem it seemed fiddly it wasn't that it was poorly written because her instructions, when you follow them step by step, you're not lost at all. Like I never felt lost. I just felt it never was in a place where I could just knit without thinking. Um, but it's soon going to get there. As soon as I get this second side done and this first side went knitted really fast. I, I worked on it last night a little bit and then a little bit more this morning and I finished it up without any trouble. And once I do that, then you knit you knit in the round 
or it's not in the round, sorry, you go back and forth, but you're knitting in one piece and then it's, it's there's no shaping, so it's very easy. Um, one of the things that I did really like once I did it, when I, while I was doing it, I was thinking, what the heck am I doing? Um, but look at the way she had you, she has us shape the, the front neck. I thought that was really cool. That's gonna fit really well, I have a feeling. Um, so yeah, that, that surprised me. Um, well, as I was doing it, I was like, hmm, this is really interesting. There is a neck band and, and uh, front band that will be done after the fact. And the last little thing that I have to tell you about this, you may remember from before, my both my mohair, see that? My mohair is a gradient and my my wool is a gradient as well. So right now I'm working with the darkest color um, but as soon as I finish that other front, I will be moving on to this color here. And these are these are popping up a little. They're looking a little more warm toned in on on screen than they are um, <laughs> than they are in life. Um, and then it'll, it'll finish off with these two. So the light blue will will be the bottom ribbing. So that is um, yeah, that's my Elton cardigan. I, I'm really enjoying the pattern now. Um, I just wasn't happy about the fact that I had to do so much, um, look at the, that color, I had so, to do so much short row shaping, but look at the gradient in there, isn't that so pretty? So far the, the mohair hasn't shown any, any signs of gradient, um, but yeah, it should. I, I'm hoping I have enough of the dark blue to, uh, to do the, I think I will, to do the neckband because I'd like, what I'd like to do for the um, front band and neck band is uh, match where the colors are. So this, the, fr the front band will be this color for this section. <laughs> Sorry, a little awkward. And then I'll change out the color, like so my neck band will match all the way down. So that I think would look really nice. So I am excited about getting this done. I do think this would be really cool. If I like the way the fabric looks, the um, alternating wool with mohair, I will, I have another idea for a sweater. It's a, a pattern that someone else has already written, but I think I will, um, I'll, I'll buy her pattern and, and then do the striping that way. So I, maybe, we'll see. It's something that I'm thinking about. Um, but yeah, so those were my three, Sorry, I dropped something. Um, I wanna make sure it stays with it. So I think that might be the, the project I'm taking on the train with me. So yeah, those are my three works in progress. Um, sticking with knitting. Anything else to show you? Yes, I have, I got, um, I got my club colors in, my, my stash acquisitions. Uh, sorry, this is gonna be crinkly. I might just cut this out. There we go. Okay, so I got the last of my Johnny Cash Club colors from Stitch Together Studio, and I absolutely love this kit. This is a speckle and speckle kit, which you hardly ever see, a speckle um, yarn for, for, uh, for the heels and toes, but I really like it, really like it. This one does not have any black speckles, surprisingly. It is called Long-legged guitar picking man. That is what this color is. <laughs> um, I really love it. It's so pretty and it's so, so soft. It is her smooth sock base, which is 75% superwash and 25% nylon. And it is 463 yards. Um, and then we get this little mini skein to go with it. So yeah, don't know what I'm gonna do with it. It will not be socks, cause I don't like knitting socks. And then I got my Studio Ghibli uh, color from Casual Fashion Queen. And there you go. It's a nice warm orange, perfect for this time of year. The name is Calcifer. I will put the character on screen so you can see who Calcifer is and where the inspiration came from. 
no idea what this is going to be. I do have one more club color coming for um, October. I think this is September's. Yes, this is September's. And that this was also a September club. Um, so I have October coming. Um, and yeah, other than that, I imagine though next week I'll have a lot of yarn to show you because of Rhinebeck and Indie Untangled. I have a couple, I have my shopping list kind of, I'm working on my shopping list. I haven't quite figured it out, but I have some good ideas, um, for what to, what I want, what to look for. I just want to solidify it and kind of make a budget so I don't go crazy. So yeah, those are my... Those are, that's, that's, that's knitting. That's my knitting content. Um, not too bad. 30 minutes in. So now I'm going to talk about sewing. I don't have too much to talk about other than my two, um, finished objects. So let me take this off. So my, let's talk about what Martha has on. This is, um, returning viewers will recognize that I have made a second blouse. The first blouse was a llama print, and I may wear that next week. It depends now. It's going to be a little chillier, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, this one I finished this morning, this dark black one. It's a cute little fox print that um, with a little tiny moon, and I don't think you're seeing too well. And the only way to show you would be to either undress or, or bring the camera closer. So I hope that you're appreciating it from there. Um, the lace showed up last week and I was able to uh, work on that. And I um, I mostly sewed this dress that I have on right here. And this is the a bird print that I got from Joanne Fabrics um, on sale at the beginning of the summer. Um, I'm happy with it. I'm gonna show you a picture of myself in this. Um, I'm happy with it mostly. So this had been a tunic pattern. Let me show you. It's a deer and doe tunic pattern. It's called Bruyere. And I um, made this version, but I, I cut the sleeve. And I did that because I didn't have enough yardage for a long sleeve. I probably would have been okay with the long sleeve, but also short sleeve is, uh, is fine for me for the office for, for year round. Um, and you can see that it is a tunic. I lengthened it by three inches, which turned out to not be quite enough. I am a little, I feel like it's a little bit short, which I'll show you a picture right now of me in it, not styled. And then I'm gonna show you a picture of me in it styled. I, um, yeah, I, I made a, a full bust adjustment and I'm really, really happy with the way that came out. I think the fit of the bust line is perfect. When I first did it, I was like, whoa, I think I overdid it. But then it turned out, it turned out fine. Um, the pattern has, I made a couple modifications. The pattern has um, front facings for inside inside the collar. And to be frank, like if you buy a shirt, there aren't any facings there. I hate facings actually. <laughs> I don't like, I don't, you only find facings almost always in home sewn clothes. You hardly ever find facings in commercial clothes. and. When you make facings in home sewn clothes, they're usually stiffer because we usually use a higher quality interfacing than they do out in commercial world. And they flap around, they stick out, they they wrinkle up, they, they're just, I, I don't like them. I don't like facings. So I didn't do the facings, I skipped them. Instead, what I did was I just sewed the collar. I think you can see I top stitched the collar down over the seams and I just, I actually had cut a bias tape thinking that I would follow the pattern and then stitch a bias tape on the inside of my neck, but I didn't need it. Like after, after I realized that I could just insert the, the, sh the raw edges all into the collar, it worked fine. Um, I wished I'd lengthened the collar a little bit, so now I have a note, because I ended up having to um, ease in the collar on t into the neckline, and it would have been useful to have it be a little, sorry, my, my boy's coming over to, to <laughs> rattle, the, <laughs> rattle the table again. Um, uh, he's, he's so rambunctious. What is going on with you, buddy? Um, anyway, 
as I was saying, I so I, that was a modification I made. The sleeve, the shortest sleeve, and then lengthening it by three inches, which turned out to be a not enough. It was, it's fine. It looks fine in the front. It looks fine in the back. The sides, because it's a shirt tail hem. <laughs> it's a shirt tail hem. The sides are really short, um, but I'm style, I'm gonna wear it out tonight. My I'm meeting my sons for dinner. Um, it's one of their birthdays, and uh, I'm styling it with some tights and and some boots, and I think it'll be fine. I can even wear shorts underneath if I really like. I have a little I have a little stretchy short um, done that I could wear underneath. Um, my my significant other thinks it looks amazing, of course. Um, but, but I I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, if I make this again, and I think I probably will make it again, I will probably add two more inches. I think if it were five, if I cut five inches extra, it was fine. But otherwise, the fit is perfect. I love it. I love the way it just. It, there's enough ease in the in, across back. It feels amazing and I have enough room in the armhole and I think the sleeve length even at this length is fine um, I think a long sleeve would be fine I also think a sleeveless would be awesome for for next summer maybe I, I like the waistband quite a lot oh my goodness Ruru he just really rattled you guys sorry um, so yeah that uh that's this and I, I realized I didn't keep talking about that one. Um, that pattern, the fox shirt pattern that Martha's wearing is from this book right here, Black, Basic Black by uh, Santo Wanobi, Wantobi, Wanton, Watonomy, Watonomy. <laughs> That's it. Um, it is view A, I believe. Yeah, so there we go. That's the, that's the blouse. Um, modifications on this, full bust adjustment. Uh, with a with a bust line dart, and I stitched the just like on the llama one. I stitched up to uh, the top of the bra line so that I could wear it comfortably without any um, anything underneath, without it, that being mandatory. Uh, the difference between this one and the llama, I made a couple little changes. I opened up the neck a little bit more. I followed the pattern um, in the book instead of uh, using the neckline that I had originally cut for the dress. Because this is, uh, the bodice is exactly the same for a dress and this tunic. And I made the sleeve a little bit fuller so that on my, on me, um, it has a little bit more fullness um, on the arm. And then I made the tie a little skinnier, which caused all kinds of trouble. And lucky you can't see it, but I ended up having to do, I did a really um, fancy decorative stitch on the neckline just because I needed to do something like a cover stitch to um, cover up all the raw edges. On, so on the inside of the neck, it's pretty raunchy. It's, it's, not, it's not my best work. Um, so <laughs> note to self. <laughs> There's a reason for that width of the bias trim that the pattern recommended. And yeah, anyway. But otherwise, I really love it. I love this print and this blouse will get a lot of wear. I'll probably wear it tomorrow to the office. And yeah, um, other the only other sewing I have to talk about is uh, the other dress I have, the other dress pattern I bought. I have the Colette pattern. This is a work in progress. This is cut out. I am, um, I'm, I'm, I've cut it out of this. Wait, let me show it to you. The right side, this is a one-way print. It's a beautiful cotton and steel uh, one-way print with these little silver metallic spider webs um, in, in these beautiful roses. I really, really love this. I am so looking forward to having this dress done. Um, my, um, my significant other is taking me to dinner uh, this week or next week for a little celebration, and I'm really hoping I have this dress done for that. Um, if I do, I will, yeah, I'll share it with you. Well, you'll see it next time. Um, my, my, um, next podcast will be a Rhinebeck recap mostly. And, uh, I may do a haul video separate. I'm not sure. I'll let you know. Um, we'll talk about it. I'll talk about it on my next podcast. 
But um, anyway, that is about all I have to talk about. And uh, I, I did, I have one other thing, but I'm gonna save it for next time because it's not urgent and it's good. It'll be good for me to talk to, talk to you, give me something to talk to you about in my next regular episode or maybe the one after that. So anyway, thank you so much for spending some time with me. Please like this video if you liked the content. That will help my little tiny channel grow. And I look forward to sharing more time with you and more yarny goodness with you next time. Have a great week. And oh, and if you see me at Rhinebeck, please say hi. I always go alone to those events and it's sometimes it's a little lonely. <laughs> and I do like to, you know, I do like to socialize, but sometimes I, I don't know, I get a little overwhelmed with, um, I'm, I'm an introvert. <laughs> so I have a little, get a little overwhelmed with, um, you know, chatting with strangers. Um, but yeah, please, please come up to me and say hi and um, tell me, Tell me what you, you know, tell me what you're, what you like at Rhinebeck. All right. Bye everyone. Have a lovely week and I will see you next time.